these are the pioneers or who have contributed on the road map of the Mahometeans. Uh, again, our, uh, our boss is the one. So wherever you go, I think his name is there. He has contributed uh, to this. Okay. That's what the, the morning breakfast time we were just uh, chatting. Uh, the Maxwell's equation, then uh, Bangla goes together. Because whatever the electromagnetism is started from there and then uh, most of the contributions from that region. Okay. It's another language. Along with the Maxwell's equation, the Bangla is also another language. So there are so much of contribution to that. Anyhow, uh, Jesse Bose has contributed towards that time of artificial dielectrics, twisted the two uh, structures, and then the chiral media, all that thing in ID coding, but nothing really uh, very impact on the on the commercial aspects of it or a realization point of view. In 40s and 50s, uh, Cohen and Koch started the periodic structures, uh, dielectric lenses. Uh, but all effect, still have effective medium concept, but nothing on negative uh, one. The Berlin is backward base. Okay, that's now we have in the Berlin diagram. And the Pierce also contributed towards uh, the TWT, the backward base uh, tubes. <coughs> and uh, actually, the father of uh, left handed meta materials is uh, all contributed by this uh, Vassalago. In 1964, uh, the paper, the Russian. Uh, version of the paper 1964 and then the English version came in 1967, uh, Soviet Journal of Physics. Uh, he came out with an idea that uh, what happens, this is just a theoretical calculation, he made it. Uh, when the, uh, the TDD is a negative index of refraction or negative epsilon, negative mu, uh, how the wave behaves? So that's his question. Okay. So that's the way he uh, thought, uh, the kind of out of the box way of thinking, and uh, that triggered many people around that time, but uh, they were realizing or uh, they were thinking the direction of uh, how to make it. It's all kind of a theory. Like it, it just, you can play with the uh, dispersion equation or you can uh, just put a NS equal to minus 1.3 or minus 1.5. Uh, but still you can do the calculations. I also did uh, during the 80s time all this negative. Uh, the, uh, my supervisor, Professor Sanya was there. Yeah. Yeah, author only has. Which one? Remind? Ito. Oh, Elf, Elf Teradis. No. In this one? Yeah, that's all, that's all Ito. Right. Yeah. Uh, Carlos, Christopher Carlos. Christopher Carlos was a student. Photograph, okay. So this is uh, Tatsu Ito, and then uh, this is Smith and Fenderick. Uh, I didn't put a Carlos and Elfridis. George Elfridis is in the University of Toronto. He is uh, he has contributed more on a bulk of materials and uh, split in resonance. George Alfred is okay. Yeah. This is uh, the initial pioneers who, who contributed towards that. All non resonant structures they made it. Okay. And uh, the first relay structures came from Smith and uh, Pendry to make a demonstration of the left handed at the time. Yeah. You were asking something. Yeah. Um, he, he tried to use this uh, kind of a dielectric media for a uh, property of it. Now, now, nowadays, I think people come to fabric, the wearable antennas on the, uh, all the artificial dielectrics to transmit the signals. So he had a uh, vision at that time itself to use as artificial dielectrics. I think this is the one I think most of the people use it for to explain the, the metal material. Uh, this I just borrowed from the laboratory. 2006 from Biology. Um, and they try to see in this uh, epsilon mu domain or a plane, it's epsilon the positive one and then negative epsilon then uh, mu. It's a positive mu and a negative mu. It's a conventional, uh, the two dimensional uh, 
plate. This is the one I think we have been using it for a very long time. The, the materials which are available all uh, show a behavior like this, a double positive. Both is the epsilon and mu or uh, positive. So it always gives uh, the propagation constants a real number in the guiding waves. The regular dialectics or the conventional the dialectics. So when you have a, a negative epsilon and then positive mu, which is basically the plasmas, okay, uh, it is a optically induced plasma or electrically induced plasma, uh, that becomes electrically negative or epsilon negative material. It's called epsilon negative material. <coughs> the other one, the fourth quadrant, uh, the epsilon is positive and uh, the mu is negative, which indicates that uh, the magnetic plasma or uh, the, the, the propagation can becomes constant becomes imaginary, kind of a uh, leaky waves or a leak, uh, exponentially decaying waves here for these two domains. Okay. So it's called mu negative or uh, <coughs> magnetic negative. Okay. The double negative, both epsilon and as well as mu negative, which becomes because you when you define your refractive index, how do you define your refractive index? Okay, when you define the refractive index of any material, then because the electromagnetic community don't use the refractive index, we always use the impedance value, but the impedance information. But the uh, optical community always use the refractive index. All right. So it's a new epsilon. Right. And for most of the time, comfortably open. This is new. And this is the square root of epsilon or s square root of epsilon. You use it, but actual definition is uh, because always it consists of non magnetic media, and then we try to ignore that. But the actual definition is n is equal to square dot mu, mu epsilon. So if one of them is a negative, if one of them is negative, either n or uh, I, I mean, either mu or epsilon is negative, it becomes the total product is negative. So that, yeah, of course, yeah, plus or minus. So, because when you get a square root of it, you get a plus or minus, right? For any value. When you take a square root, it comes out to plus or minus. So, uh, either one of them is negative, it finally it comes with the negative one, so square root of the negative value leads to an imaginary number, that's why you get a uh, exponentially decaying waves of those two regions. If both are positive or both are negative, if both are positive or both are negative, still the product is a positive, so you get a the real value in both these domains. Both these domains. <clears throat> so that's the way they have uh, come out with this kind of concept, double negative uh, materials. And this is Vassalagor's uh, approach. When you have a uh, kind of a conventional right-handed medium, when the wave is propagating, this uh, uh, most of you must be familiar with this Snell's law of reflection and refraction. So the wave is propagating from media one to media two. Uh, depends on whether uh, the second medium has got a higher dielectric constant or a lower uh, dielectric constant. It, it, it deviates away from normal or closer to the normal. Right? So this is deviates like this. So you get a refraction or a transmitted signal in this way. Okay. 
and the boundary conditions are satisfied according to the, uh, the electromagnetic constitutive relations. Uh, in the case of a left-handed medium, how it behaves? So that's a question. So that's a, uh, the first he added. So when you have uh, the HCM signal like this, since we have got a, a negative uh, or left-handed medium here, so the fact uh, diffraction is not uh, not in this direction. Diffraction is happening in this way because you have got a uh, you are, you are, uh, the normal lecture, the normal uh, the propagation vector is in this direction. So the energy is traveling in the positive direction. The wave vector is on the negative direction. Okay. So this is the way you get this uh, the negative uh, or a left-handed medium. Uh, when I say the left-handed medium, uh, it's all uh, we have been using it, but uh, we try to uh, ignore that. Like uh, when you have a, uh, a cos omega t is uh, exponential j omega t plus exponential minus j omega t by two, right? That's why. We respect the signals, that's the sine signal. This is an example I'm trying to give. Uh, the, the, the Fourier transform, when you try to look into it, so one is here and the one is down here. Okay. So this cos omega zero t, it's a plus omega and minus omega. Okay. So that's what we see in our sine omega d, our cos omega d signal. Okay. And uh, when the t is zero, in the starting point, t equals to zero, it becomes one, right? This combines and it leads to one. So somewhere here, the signal lies here at t equal to zero. So as the time progresses, as the time moves, okay, the one signal is this is the right hand. Uh, one is exponential j omega t term, or is a exponential minus j omega t term. Exponential minus j omega t is the right handed propagation. One exponential j omega t is the left handed propagation. So as it, as this time pauses, you have the signal moves the right handed rotation, and then uh, at the same time, the other vector moves in the, the left hand okay. the left handed rotation. So that's why the signal gets split into that. So if you have a right hand and left hand behavior, you even can observe it in that uh, a normal signal here. So that was the observation we, he, we found by, the, by doing the analysis. Okay. And uh, another one was the, the, the goose hanging ship. Okay. Whenever you have a reflection from a, from a, a signal which is uh, interacting with a boundary, you're right. So you get a, a, a small reflection phase, a small amount of reflection phase shift which has been observed. Okay. That's called the goose hanging uh, phase shift. Okay. So that's uh, normal media, normal dialectics, epsilon 1, epsilon 2, when you have a, a incident signal when it's getting reflected, that's got a, a positive uh, or a kind of a, a phase shift you get, it, you will be getting it, right? What happens when it has a, a, a negative a medium? Okay. It is a negative medium, the shift is on the other side, so you get this way. Okay. The shift is kind of a superimposed, and then the reflected beam comes through this. So that makes it Basically, this uh, converging beam. So one can exploit that. The optical community has exploited that uh, very well. Like this, if you have a, a sandwich of uh, uh, left hand and right hand, uh, left hand medium is sandwiched between the two right hand medium uh, ma materials. For a, a conventional right hand media, is get, getting a divergent diverge. Beams are getting diverged. Okay. But for uh, this kind of a media, you have a, a focus. Okay. Yes, sir. A focus because the energy is focusing towards this, so one could use as a kind of a, a concave lens or a converging one, converging signal, uh, so they call as a super lens. Okay. So they call as a super lens because you can focus a signal into that for imaging uh, applications and that's where uh, all these uh, cloaking uh, concepts have been uh, realized by optical community. Okay. And I'm not going to that direction because we are not doing any on cloaking. <coughs> Is the, using the Drude Lorentz uh, theory, uh, one could uh, express this, the refractive index in this way. And uh, as the left handed medium is sandwiched between your uh, uh, right hand medium, okay, this is the right hand medium, this is again right hand medium, this is the, the left handed medium. When I try to do the field propagation study, 
okay, here, the signal is uh, incident here, okay. and it becomes a little lossy, of course, because of the complex nature. Okay. And uh, as the signal propagates here, you can see the, uh, the, the the phase wave trend is moving in this direction. Okay. If you try to observe very closely, okay. and you can see that there is kind of a converging here, this point, okay. the converging point here, and then again it goes. Okay. This uh, DNG, DPS, uh, double positive, double negative, and then followed by a, a double positive medium. Yeah, this is the Fenry uh, visualized in this way, as a kind of a, in a continuation of a Vesalago's experiment, what I showed earlier. Uh, if you see an empty glass, okay, the straw looks like this, and in a conventional diagram on the regular water, the regular water has got a refractive index of 1.3. You get a slight refraction, and then you can see slight bending onto that, right? And if suppose if it is a negative water, okay, we don't have a negative water, but uh, just, uh, for the sake of argument, okay, it should reflect in the other direction. Should be like this. So the the concept of super lens came because of this. The surface waves make it a converging one, and then came out of this. This is the, the right-handed and left-handed propagation, the conventional right-handed propagation which we have been using it for uh, so many years or so many decades. Okay. And uh, for the left-handed one, as I explained here, it's, it's kind of a left-handed rotations. Okay. And uh, the propagation vector is in this, still in this uh, positive direction. Your energy, energy flow is in this. Uh, I mean, there's a K vector and there's a propagation vector here. Okay. So that is referred as a <coughs> left-handed metamaterial. Yeah, there's an error here. It should be D here. It should be D. It should be D here. Just correct it. This may work when the when the signal goes and then it builds up and then converges at the right hand side. So we're using one of our conventional FTTD uh, tool. Okay. So why this meta metal made so much of interest to the microwave community is. Uh, more involved with the lexical, uh, more involved with the electromagnetics, and a uh, little bit on the material science. Little bit of material science means you need to understand uh, the, the, the material properties. I'm not saying the material science means not real material science of the chemistry. The material uh, properties, uh, what I mean is epsilon and mu or sigma or whatever you call it. Okay. So <clears throat> the people have explored that, these metamaterial concepts, for uh, some time and investigated uh, into that to realize various passive and active circuits, including uh, for antenna uh, performance. Okay. On the antennas, the guided wave applications and metamaterials uh, lead to a compact uh, one. I'll show some of the, our work as well as the others work later. And uh, size reduction is re remarkable. And then you can make it very small and compact uh, antennas and then uh, the, the filters. The other improvements are you can have a slightly wider bandwidth can tailor it, you can do some dispersion engineering with the omega beta diagram, control your uh, the parametric uh, elements, values, ln, c, such a way that you can control the dispersion engineering, you can widen up the bandwidth. Again, there's a limitation of uh, realizing uh, a little later, but uh, you can do some kind of a dispersion engineering to make it slightly wider a bandwidth. And uh, of course, the pattern shape and all, you can do it by uh, playing with the uh, different type of uh, metamaterials or different type of structure slots uh, into that. Yeah, this is the first one realized uh, to prove that there is a negative uh, permeability effect. Okay. So they've gone with the split ring structures. Okay. So it could be circle or it could be spire. And uh, Pendry made this, and then he did some theoretical analysis also, which I'll show it later. So the effective permeability, when you try to look into the effective permeability, okay, uh, this is the mathematical uh, expression for that. Okay. But if you see the gra graphical uh, description of this effective uh, permeability, you could see that there is a resonance observed. Okay. There is a resonance observed at this point. And you can have a kind of a stop band here. At this region, you have a, a negative permeability. Okay. This is all positive. There's a magnetic resonance here and then over uh, this region you have a, a negative permeability. You can exploit this frequency spectrum for 
for negative permeability. This region you have got a effective permeability is negative. So you can have a, a new negative. <coughs> and then the parallelly, the other negative epsilon uh, structure has been realized. This is by introducing a, a kind of a multiple thin wires. The multiple thin wires when the energy is incident from here, the periodic thin wire medium, it exhibited the, the negative uh, perm, uh, permittivity also. Okay. So what this Smith has done is he combined this, he combined the earlier structure. Combine this uh, the split ring structure and the, the thin wire together to make it uh, double negative. Okay. To make it uh, double negative. Okay. And the, uh, the Fenrir analyzed this theoretically by come out, coming out with this uh, uh, the plasma frequency for the, the thin wire and then the magnetic plasma uh, frequency for uh, uh, for a split ring structure. Okay. So I, I'm not going to the mathematical details of it, but it's all collision time of the precarious of the plasma uh, generation. Okay. And this is the <coughs> permeability without, uh, before the, the plasma creation of the plasma one. Okay. So it's almost uh, look uh, alike. And uh, this is uh, for the passive uh, permeability and the negative permittivity. And the bottom one is for the negative uh, permeability and then passive uh, permittivity. Okay. So you combine this structure to show that but it's a very bulky structure. Okay, very bulky structure, and then he demonstrated first to show that there is a, a double negative effect could be observed on this uh, medium. So this followed up or uh, with the other groups of people uh, making a bulk metamaterials. Okay, the bulk metamaterials are mainly followed by the electromagnetic uh, constitutive relations only, but not on the periodic. It doesn't. The second. Uh, the secondary component is the periodicity, but more uh, the concept lies on the constitutive relations of the, uh, the electromagnetic uh, dynamics there. This is one of the structure realized uh, by um, Henry in 2005. Uh, what he did is uh, the dielectric media, he assumed that is a kind of a, a perfect electric conductor on the both bottom and uh, top. It's a, a kind of a parallel plate model with the dielectric load guides, and then this uh, both sides. Uh, open, uh, perfect magnetic, and then he introduced this uh, to the thin wires. If you try to see this structure, it goes back to our uh, usual rectangular wave bed with the inductive force, the periodic inductive force. Okay. So again, it, it boils down to the same thing, what, what earlier people have done it. Okay. But uh, a conventional waveguide with the additional loading of it. Okay. So that's the way you can realize this uh, negative permeability or negative permittivity. So by inducting, uh, by, uh, by introducing this kind of uh, a periodical uh, thin wires, you are introducing an additional inductance there, kind of inductive force. So when you try to see this, there is a resonance for this. Okay. It's a conventional transmission line, a conventional transmission line with an additional inductive load of a thin wire contribute towards a certain uh, stop gap. Okay. So it's again some bulky. Okay. And then people have done with the edge coupled or a broadside coupled uh, split ring resonators. Is, okay. So this could be bottle like LCR. This has got an uh, inherent resistance for that. Okay. And then there's a capacitance and then the inductance contributed by this uh, ring. Okay. And the other one also is there. And then there's a mutual coupling between this, uh, the capacitance coupling between these two uh, resonators. But we see it. And then if you can have a multiple structures and then you can make like transmission line model and then uh, find out your effective uh, permeability how it behaves. Okay. This is omega beta diagram again. This is a stop band just observed around 1.5 uh, angular frequency. Okay. So this positive and negative uh, positive epsilon negative mu is, 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 is uh, done by this uh, Pentry group and then they are theoretically analyzed and then demonstrated it that is it's possible to make such kind of uh, structure. For a while, this, this was there. This is also another structure where you have uh, a double sided, this is a broadside coupled uh, uh, split ring resonators. Okay. And uh, when they analyze it, again, it's, uh, it's all for a different, um, uh, uh, it's a broadside coupled and then uh, left handed uh, one. Okay. There's a, a slight variation in this. Uh, this is a stop band here. This is a stop band. This is an omega beta diagram. Okay. So this is a um, 
the reference voltage is given later. So I think various people have done this at that time, and then uh, all these results have been com combined here to show that how this omega beta diagram looks like for a broad side, okay, both sides. And this thickness also matters here. Okay, the amount of coupling between them contributes to that. <coughs> And later, the Bayanas and then uh, the Matthews group have uh, done uh, on the bulk metameter, the three-dimensional one. Okay, they printed on all the, <coughs> the sites and then the array of the structures, how it behaves. Okay. That's what, once the avenue is open, I think that people will try to explore it in a, in a, in a, in a more uh, rigorous way. Okay. And this is the, the two turns spiral and then there's the multi-turns uh, spiral inductors. All that has been done on the dial rig guide and to realize this. And we will not go into the bulk metamaterials too in detail because our focus is on the leaky wave antennas. I'll come down to the leaky wave antennas after this. Okay. This is uh, the beacon has uh, approached this way. And uh, the array of structures, array of uh, split ring structures, this is the one which we made it on a uh, dielectric board of four with a dielectric absence of 4.4, the thickness of uh, 0.45 mm. And this is the optimum dimensions that he realized finally for this uh, uh, very good stop band suppression. Okay. This year done in around the uh, beginning of 2000, 2001 or 2002. Okay. Uh, yeah. He made this structure and then tried to check it in the anechoic chamber, okay. kind of absorber he put it. And then when the energy is going in this direction, how much suppression? Okay. So you could see that there's a, uh, there's a clear stop band here. We yeah, observe this S11. Okay, this is S11 and this is S21. Uh, this is S21 and S21. So you clearly see that there's a very good separation. You could see that. Okay. This is uh, because, all because of the resonance which is happening because of the uh, sort of structure. Okay. And uh, again, uh, people have done with the adjusting or uh, optimizing the dielectric thickness and then. Uh, um, not aligning all the boards together, a slight shift, so that we can widen up the bandwidth. Each one has got a certain resonance and then the widen up. Okay. So this is the just pure SSR, uh, SRR and then uh, just wire structure and then the left-handed media. Okay. Because the thin line as well as, this is all printed structures. The, what the pentry has done is all uh, on the, the thin wire is separate, but here the thin wire is printed on the uh, board itself. Okay. Just a translation into the printed structure. So by uh, de-aligning that, they could widen up the, the spectrum of the electrons. Okay, so next, I'll move on to the composite right left hand. Uh, do you want to have a break here, or, or whatever we discuss uh, sub, uh, for, uh, for a couple of uh, questions, I can handle it and then go for a break and then come back. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think a lot of books are. One is uh, the, the 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 Spanish group. Uh, uh, what is his name? He recently expired. Um, Spanish group. Uh, what is his name? Yeah. So that group has been doing it on a on and of course, the George Elfridis. Uh, also has written a book, more on physics. Uh, I think for us, more close to his, more close to us is the Carlos and Itos because he come out with the transmission line concepts and that. And, uh, the other one is Nader Rengeta. Nader Rengeta also has written. But again, it's uh, more on uh, optics, optics related. So, but we can refer to those books. So we, to get a concept, that definitely those books are useful. Admission as a parameter is not considered in discussion. Question? Admission is not yeah. considered. Because the structure is supposed to uh, produce high. Loss. Definitely, yeah. It's all high lossy. Uh, if you see all the works which have been done by uh, most of the metamaterial groups, they try to comfortably ignore the, uh, the attenuation part. But actually, it has got a uh, lossy behavior. What would be the other uh, the metam uh, These materials have got uh, uh, the normal substrates. So uh, the conductivity is very low. <laughs> Negative epsilon depends on the frequency; it goes very, uh, very much low. Uh, negative mu also, but uh, it goes too low. Uh, it's, it's 
it's difficult to compute in a, in a kind of analytical way. Yeah. The temperature effect is always there because your epsilon permittivity will be uh, getting shifted. Permittivity will be uh, dependent on that. But uh, most of the conventional materials that we use are quite stable over a range of frequencies, uh, or a range of frequencies of interest. <laughs> Room temperature is because we use all the roaches. When you, uh, I'll show all the materials that uh, we have done it uh, for our experiments. All the conventional roaches, uh, derived substrate has been used for our uh, for realization. Hello. Yeah. Uh, that's why uh, the water is only animated and then it is called single frequency. Single frequency, yes. So what what should be the change in the yeah, you, you, your your permittivity or permeability of the material property is not uniform over a range right, of frequencies. The definition may not valid for uh, the wide band system. You need to you need to consider the group velocity. You need to you need to introduce the dispersive behavior of the material property. Then only it becomes more relevant or more accurate uh, evaluation of your parameters. You cannot keep it as a independent one. You need to uh, in most of the the, the, the tools. Tools have got the dispersive nature of uh, all this permittivity and permittivity. You have to. Measurement must be dispersive. That means it's wide band. Yes. We're dealing with wide band. Wide band. But uh, theoretically, uh, we're dealing with single frequency. That is phase velocity. Define n is defining in terms of phase velocity. Yeah. So, but that should not be. Yeah, you should you should you should bring in a dispersive behavior because most of the work I think they will try to simplify it. The report in the literature they try to simplify it at one frequency, but it should not should not be there. Should bring in a dispersive behavior and then take into account of that. Then how n can be negative? Yeah. Then how can n can be negative for group of wells? Over the range of frequencies, uh, you have to you have to find out that whether the n is uh, the negative refractive index is displaying that kind of a property. Uh, or in terms of the electromagnetic community, we try to see your your s11, s21, or the group velocity uh, behavior over a range of frequencies. If you see, you can clearly see the negative index of uh, negative the phase velocity. Meta -media, is it following Maxwell equation or is it violating Maxwell equation? Yes. If it is following, That's good. group velocity and phase velocity should be in uh, same direction. But since meta material is talking about minus negative means minus n, that means negative permittivity. And uh, this uh, borrowing diagram, the left side, how is it referring this um, Maxwell equation? Still, your power flow is uh, in the positive direction only. You're, you get a negative. That's what I told the right hand left hand rotation, right? Suppose you have got a, a signal which is traveling, a right hand medium, it's, it's making a phase shift or a phase advance, right? And if you try to introduce a kind of a negative medial, it tries to compensate. So you can get a zero phase shift also. Because the, the, the phase shift becomes a negative phase shift. So when you get a, uh, a, a accumulated phase shift, it becomes a, a zero also. So Maxwell's equation still obeys. Although Maxwell's equation still obeys. The fraction. It means either you or a sergeant should be negative, or both should be negative. Both should be negative. Yes. And so what is plasmons? Plasmons. Plasmons are different. Plasmons are different. Surface plasmons are different. They are a part of metamaterials? No. The plasmons or surface plasmons are created by, on, the, on the metal by if you are impinging the optical signal onto the, the surface. Yeah, surface. The plasma frequency is very high because uh, when you try to, uh, it's it's a free electron uh, hole plasma creation so that uh, very high frequency. For normally for a dielectric, uh, for a, I can say for a silicon it's around 94 gigahertz, 94 to 96 gigahertz. Sir, uh, sir, one question. Sir, I have seen uh, many of papers, uh, they are using MNG and ENG structures right. in their designing. So how will you justify this type of structure for the wave propagation in the structure? There is, uh, uh, in, in this world, there is no negative uh, permittivity or no negative permittivity substrates are available. So don't think that you can go and buy from a vendor that I want a negative epsilon value or negative. You cannot, you cannot get that. Okay. All the conventional materials, 
are defined as a positive dielectric, positive material constants. Okay. How to make that is you have a host dielectric. By implementing this kind of SRL structure or a thin wire structure, or later when you try to discover the composite right left handed, you can realize the negative effective permittivity or negative effective permeability. You can, you can realize it, but you cannot get the material with a negative epsilon or negative yeah, in, a, in a real way. So, uh, is it predetermined? Uh, you used your structure one port and um, two ports, or you used an quick chamber to chamber, chamber, chamber. Sir, how surface level loss is reduced using periodic structure? Surface fail losses no. can be reduced. How it, it can be reduced? In the leaky wave antenna structure, sir? So. Yeah, yeah. The leaky wave antenna, we exploit the surface wave only. We try to get whatever the guided wave signal which is uh, excited, we try to get as much as possible out of it. So if we can make this leakage rate higher, we get a better radiation efficiency. Uh, uh, from, uh, using the, this uh, periodic structure, so I have uh, seen that uh, the surface wave losses have reduced. So how is it possible? No, periodic structure, uh, definitely there is a discontinuity, mean there is a certain amount of losses can happen. Okay, so I am not I am not sure what uh, what direction you are... Uh, I have a substrate and I am removing some uh, part of the substrate and after removing the part of the substrate, the surface wave losses are reduced. So how to cause it vertically? I am not getting it. Remove the substrate? Yeah. And uh, the substrate, no, the substrate is part of the substrate. Okay. When I remove the part of the substrate, and losses get reduced. I'm not sure what, what, what context you are, maybe we will discuss. Uh, we can show you the structure and then we can discuss. <coughs> uh, good morning, uh, Professor. I have one question. Actually, uh, you have discussed about the periodic structures. Yeah. Uh, what about the non-periodic? Any liquid wave? Yeah, definitely it is yeah. there. This will give rise to broadband? or uh, You may not be able to get a broadband, but uh, yeah. you may not be able to synthesize your uh, direction or a pattern uh, okay. shape. Yeah. A periodic. Uh, a same thing we can also apply it in the meta Okay. Excuse me, sir. Sir. So just. Sir, uh, in one of the structure, in the case of bulk material, uh, you have taken uh, two sides uh, perfect electron material and two sides uh, perfect magnetic conductor or uh, magnetically open. Sir, why you have taken magnetic magnetically open on uh, both sides? This is a kind of a parallel plate uh, model that one, and then introduce the, the thin wires onto that. Okay. It could be kind of a dielectric also. But we can can make it. Becomes a kind of rectangular wave, dielectric filled rectangular wave kinds. Okay. And the so next question is uh, uh, can we calculate the ring size for a particular frequency? Yes. Okay, that controls basically the, the frequency, the ring dimension. Okay. Then uh, how can we calculate? It is possible to calculate by formulation or so uh, formulation. By formulation. There are formulations available. I, I didn't put it here, but if you refer the, the papers, I think it's available. Okay. And sir, uh, can we generate uh, uh, a negative permittivity substrate for wide band application? Not on this SRF structure or uh, thin wire structures. If you go for a composite right left hand, you can make a wide band. So that I will be discussing it in the optical breaker. Okay. And, uh, the structure of metals are SRF is designed in such a way that negative permeability. Because when you say negative permeability, sometimes it kind of uh, Kind of a vague concepts, right? When you, when you try to discuss negative epsilon or negative, for that one need to understand what is positive epsilon, what is permittivity, what is dielectric constant, right? So when you try to define your dielectric, all the related dielectric constants, so relative permittivity is certain value, two or two point two means uh, when you excite uh, one volt in the, in the free space, how much the charge displacement is called eight point eight five four into ten power minus twelve farads per meter. That's a free space, right? So the positive value is two point two times means charge separation is not in the direction, it's it's kind of attractive. Okay, so that's where your negative permittivity or permeability to be seen. Uh, sir, uh, 
सुन सर सर व्हाट इज द कांसेप्ट ऑफ बैकवर्ड रेडिएटिंग वेव यू हैव यूज्ड द टर्म बैकवर्ड रेडिएटिंग वेव बट द स्ट्रक्चर इज ओपन ओनली इन वन साइड ओनली इन अपर साइड बैकवर्ड मींस आई एम नॉट फ्लाइंग द डाउन बैकवर्ड डायरेक्शन टू द ब्रॉड साइड सो द ब्रॉड साइड इज अ फॉरवर्ड बैकवर्ड Uh, that means other than the uh, broad side, uh, broad side. Right. Uh, so now we'll have a short tea break, so about 15 minutes tea break. So I request all the delegates to finish tea within.